I'm Jo from Blooms at Borrowdale in Holtley Clay. I've got a florist in Holtley Clay uh, working from home and I'm here today at Green Futures to go through how to make a seasonal hanging basket with you. Uh, we've got some lovely seasonal um, late autumn winter flowers and plants for you to put into here. Uh, we've got a lovely trailing ivy which um, has got a nice variegation in it so it's quite bright which this time of year when things are starting to get a bit duller it's always nice to have a little bit of brighter colour in there and autumn is a very bright colourful time of year. Um, we've got a cyclamen got, which has got a really nice grey glaucousy foliage, nice pink flowers again quite bright, brighten up the days as they get shorter and then we've got some winter pansies in all different colours um, to make this basket. So the basket that we're using is a, um, a wicker basket and it's pre-lined with the plastic liner and there is a few holes in there which are pre-made. You do need some drainage otherwise your basket may become waterlogged so just using the holes that are already in there. I'm just going to pop some gloves on. So I've got a nice mix, uh, multi-purpose uh, compost in here, which I'm just gonna use my hands. It's almost like you're making a crumble, just to get rid of any lumps that's in the compost before you start filling the container. It's important to get rid of some of the lumps. I'm not actually a baker. Uh, I'm not very good at baking, but they tell me it's a bit like making a crumble. <laughs> so just getting rid of all those lumps and bumps and sometimes you get those really hard bits in compost which really inhibit the roots so it's best always best to take those out so fill in the container and just give it a little gentle push down as you're filling it just to settle it into position there's quite a lot of air in here and so it just needs a little push down just to put everything in place so I'm not going to overfill it and it's probable that we'll probably have to take a little bit out but that's enough just for now. So we've got about an, an, in, an inch or so lower than the edge of the, contain, the plastic liner which is about right because as we start putting the plants in the plant root ball will take up some of the room and so we'll end up with probably a little bit too much compost just worth checking your liner and make sure that it's not curled over in any places and that it's sitting nicely against the edge of your basket. So I'm going to start with the trailing ivy. This is going to hang over the edge of the basket and create some nice interest rather than everything being on, over the top. It just brings the colour out and down the sides of the basket and just create some much more interesting. So I'm just using my hand just to scoop out a hole, take, taking the uh, ivy from the pot. There's quite a nice root system there. It's not too compacted. If it's really compacted, it's ideal to just tease out the roots. This isn't compacted at all. It's a really nice root system. So that's a really, that's ideal. But if you do find when you take plants out of the pots that they're really root bound then just tease the roots out and that will encourage them to look for fresh compost otherwise they tend to just continue spiraling and can't work the way out. Once you've made your hole and you've teased out your roots if necessary I'm just going to angle the ivy in so that it's hanging over the edge of the basket so just at a slight angle and then just work in the compost that we've moved out of the way when we made the hole back around the plant and just using the, my fingers just to give it a little push down, not too hard, but just to settle the compost around. And you can just tap the sides of the basket and that'll just settle everything down. Okay, so we've got the trailing ivy in. That's going to bush out and continue to trail down the ivy, uh, down the side of the basket. 
uh, and you can also manipulate the stems once it's you finish making. So the next thing to put in is the cyclamen. This is going to sit quite central into the basket. So we're just going to make, it's a much bigger root ball, so we're going to make a much bigger hole. So just pushing the ivy out the way if you need to and just making a hole big enough. So once you've done that, you can take the cyclamen out. Again, we've got a nice root system on there. It's not too compacted. Uh, you don't really need to tease those roots out at all. Um, that's a really nice, healthy plant. Just offer it up into the hole and then just gently lift up the leaves and start to fill back and just give it a little push down just to settle it into position and just start to bring all that compost that you moved out the way back around the edge so it's nicely settled underneath all that leaf. It is probably possible to break off a few leaves while you're doing this but I wouldn't worry too much about it. Again just a little tap just to bring that compost in. If you do snap a few off it's not the end of the world. Okay, so we've got the cyclamen nicely in the centre. The reason we've put that in the centre is because it's nice and tall and it will um, the, the, uh, the leaves fan out nicely so they cover a nice area but the flowers themselves are quite tall, much taller than the pansies. So, and because we've only got one, we're going to put that in the centre so it's right in the middle. The ivy to the side so it cascades nicely over the edge. And then we're going to fill in around the cyclamen with the winter pansies. So if you need to, these aren't too compacted again, So, but if you need to, just a little tease at the base just to encourage the roots out so that they know they're going into fresh compost. And then just making a little hole with your hands, your fingers, and then just plop that in. Give it a nice push down into position and then just bring that compost in around. Little tap on the side just to bring the compost in. So we're going to work around. If you end up with too much compost, that's fine. You can take the compost out of the hole rather than move it to one side if you feel that there's too much. So either scoop out the compost or make a hole because we've got all the plants in there now, it all becomes quite compact. So if you need to take some out, that's fine. Just check the roots. Again, they're not particularly compacted. It's a little tease out just to encourage them into the hole. And then if you need to, because we've actually taken the compost out rather than moved it out of the way, you sometimes end up with a little bit too short. So just adding a little bit extra in just to make sure that that root ball is nice and covered. So there's a little bit more room here so I don't need to scoop any out. So we've got a, we'll go with a white one next. So we've got a blue, we've got a purple, we've got a white and purple. This one you can see is a little bit more root bound. So I'm going to just and it's very hard, it's very compact. So I'm just going to tease out. Don't worry if a few break off, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's, it'll, the plant will be fine. Just rough up the sides a little bit if they're a bit compacted. Just bring out the roots. And then I'm just lifting up the, because we're coming round more towards the cyclamen now, just lifting up the, the leaves of the cyclamen just to move them out of the way so I don't damage that plant at all. And then just using a little bit more compost just to infill around that one. And just give it a nice push into position. So 
next one. Just using my two fingers just to make a hole. Got a nice yellow one. Again, a little bit compacted. Just tease away those roots. into position and then just, if you need to, a little bit of compost just to infill. So we're just gonna work our way around, trying not to get the same colors next to each other. So this one is a really good root bowl, not too compacted. Pop the plant in and give it a little push down and then just bring that compost if we need it. It's always best to lift the foliage out the way as best you can. Just give it a little and then just tap it all down. So we've got one more, which I'm gonna have to take some out. By the time you get to the end, there's always too much. So just take out all of the compost you don't need to make the hole. Check the root ball, that's a good one. Place that in position. And then just use a little bit to backfill. Around that root ball. And just lift up the ivy, make sure we've got compost around all that as well now. So just a little, little at a time, don't overfill it. And that just really settles all the compost and just make sure that the compost is lower than the plastic liner. So that when you water, it doesn't all run through. And then you can just just use your hands just to dust off any compost that's on the plants. But then you need to water everything in. Just rearrange the foliage if you think it, it's got a bit squashed while you've been planting. And then you can take it outside and give it a really good water. What I would suggest you do with the water in rather than really flood it full of water, is to take a, a, either a, a hose with, a, with a, a spray on it, a shower spray on it, or a watering can with a rose, and go over the uh, hanging basket like this. And then that way you don't get all the water concentrating in there, and then let it soak, and then do a little bit more. Let it soak, water a bit more, until you feel, you can feel a, a huge weight difference because the water will be, um, the, the compost will be nice and wet. Um, and then when you, when you feel that the top of the compost is nice and wet and it feels much heavier, then you can then leave it to, uh, and hang it in position. important to keep the compost moist so water it depending on the weather probably twice a week I would say at least but keep an eye on it because they can dry out there's quite a lot in a very small space so all of those roots are going to start to grow they're going to start to leach the nutrients they're going to start to take up all the moisture so they do dry up quite quickly 
So what I would suggest is at least twice a week, but keep an eye on it if it's excessively dry. And then you can also use uh, like a liquid feed in with the water and then that will keep the plants nice and healthy throughout the winter. The other important thing to mention is deadheading. Any flowers that are faded, we've got one here where there's just a stem, the flower has actually fallen away. So you can either use your fingers or some scissors and just nip away that stem. It's not going to produce anything else, that stem, but by deadheading, it encourages new flowers and then your display will last longer. So as the pansies fade, don't just take the petals, you need to take all of the stem. So take your, your fingers and work, work it way down right to where the stem comes from the plant and then just pinch or use a pair of scissors. But you need to take the whole thing, not just the petals, because this, where the seeds form will be just insert in there and that's the bit that you need to get rid of because if the plant thinks it's... Um, it's produced seed, it thinks it's done its job, it won't produce any more flowers. So really important to deadhead um, and keep it well watered and then feed it. There's probably enough feed in that compost to last maybe six weeks, something like that. Uh, after that length of time, then the nutrients in the soil will be depleted, so you will need to replace them. A liquid feed is, is a really good idea for that. Um, and the instructions will be on the feed as to how much mix you need with a certain amount of water. Um, but these baskets are really nice for this time of year. They bring in a little bit of colour after the summer as ones have all faded. Um, and you can get some really nice colour in these little winter pansies. Uh, so that's a nice autumn basket uh, which will last a good few weeks.